So let's give a round of applause for Sky Innovation Group of the Policy Science. I have the time to fail, uh, failure a good start for a wonderful career. And I have some good news for you. Well, I really think the parameters on which we were judging the competence of people and uh, how people engage with the, the reality that is there is undergoing a radical shift. With artificial intelligence, the way the technology is moving, and with the way it is actually taking over our cognitive demands, which characterized the earlier generation, we are going to actually enter into a new era where people whose qualities were considered not so good, you know, the capacity to think in many directions, not to focus on something, and do not have great memory, are suddenly going to find them far more important because it will be a world of ideas and flux, and how do you uh, uh, cope with flux? This is going to be the sort of quality that will characterize the future technology and the future generation because so many things which used to be the quality of the human being, memorizing things, holding on to things, will be actually transformed with the adoption of technology and artificial intelligence. So this particular talk I have is for primarily for people like me who started off very badly with failures. And also to illustrate how failure can become a very powerful force in taking you forward into new dimensions and towards an eclectic intelligence. As you saw, when I was a child, I was very bad. I was hardly going to school and the teachers actually despaired of me and everybody more or less had very poor opinion about how I would perform. And in a sense, it was a tremendous relief to me because without much expectations, I could thrive in whatever I was doing. And it also laid the foundation for a very creative thinking. Because I, when I hear parents come and say, oh, my daughter is doing exceptionally well, and that one is doing, I really shudder. Because had that been the sort of uh, uh, constraint which actually led my own childhood, it's very unlikely I would have developed into a sort of person I am today, which I think is a happy person. So I think that's very important. I thought I would become an inventor because I was always dabbling with things, or an architect because I had a natural understanding of form and color and the light and space, or an engineer because I was interested in technology, or like my mother, a mission hospital physician. But when I failed in PUC, I suddenly realized that the options which are open to me, uh, which I thought were virtue of my, my, my talent, were no longer possible because I had failed PUC. And all the options completely collapsed and I came to face the reality that it's not the quality of your intellect that is important, but that you have to confine to a certain rules and regulations to play the game, as it were. And I know that's why I started off by saying that the game rules of the game are bound to change. And I suddenly found myself, my mother somehow put me in dentistry, and I have put it here as stupidity or prejudice, because dentistry is probably one of the most, it's a microcosm of possibilities, of creativity. It's the one field in which technology, ceramics, uh, anesthesia was the first one to be used in dentistry. It is one of the most innovative fields. But because I did not become an architect, I was prejudiced against it. And that constrained how actually I function in that field. Then two things happened. My mother told me a fantastic story, and you can see the picture of Somerset Mom. And I forget the name of the person. My mother told there was a church in London. And there was a verger there. Verger is a sort of one who looks after the church and looks after the, uh, you know, keeps it clean and so on and so forth. And for 17 years, this man had, with great dedication, actually run this place. And everybody liked him, loved him. 
and then one day the priest changed the new priest was coming out with new ideas and doing all sorts of things differently and he did not like this man and before long one day he called him into his office after he had finished his work and he told him and when he went there the church wardens were also sitting there and everybody was keeping a long face they were it was so serious and uh, they told him uh, we will call him mr philips because i can't get his name anyway mr philips you have been a fantastic worker we want to really commend you for what you have done but uh, i'm afraid we have discovered that you do not know how to read or write you do not have the education and we cannot have a verger in this church because it's such a great church who does not know how to read or write but we want to be generous we'll give you 6 months to learn and then you if you don't learn i'm afraid you have to go now mr philips was a man of uh, honor he had really put heart and soul into serving he said thank you very much you know i will give my resignation and i will work till you find somebody to replace me after that he started walking around like me once in a while he enjoyed having a cigarette and he found that even though he walked one or two kilometers or three he could not find a shop where he could buy some chocolates and have a cigarette or a cigar to smoke and then he found one shop then he walked thinking 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 to his home and when he, when he reached home his wife asked him what's uh, what happened why are you looking so distraught he said i will speak about it tomorrow the next day he walked back those 3 kilometers and he found a place which was for rent and he went to the church and gave his resignation to the priest who had actually found his qualification which had served him so very well uh, no qualifications at all and he took gave his resignation and came back and took up this shop and he set up a shop with his wife there selling tobacco chocolates small small things and he was extremely successful after many years after 10 years he had 10 shops in london and he had made a lot of money he was proved a great businessman one day he when he was actually going and giving his money at the bank the clerk said our manager would like to speak to you so he went to the see the manager manager was standing and the manager said mr philips do you realize that you are a very rich man he said i suppose so i know i have 10 shops i know that i have made money he said but you are only putting it in deposit account you are not investing your money you have 30000 pounds sitting here and you are not invested anything you don't have to worry about it we will invest it for you we will put it and all you need to do is to read and actually sign the document everything will be taken care you don't have to worry about it then mr philip said i am very sorry see i do not know how to read or write so i couldn't possibly do justice to this then the manager leapt up from his chair and said mr philip if without knowing how to read or write you could achieve so much if only you knew how to read or write and had an education what a great man you would have become then mr philip said that i can certainly tell you if i knew how to read or write i still would be the poor servant uh, verger at uh, st pancras so my mother told me this story uh, probably to indicate that i had already failed in anatomy i had failed in chemistry and i was not doing well i was a falling uh, student you know that if this does not work you have to find something else i do not know but that story has stayed with me the possibility that lie and then in manipal where i was a dental student i met a great man mr t m dr t m p pai in an extraordinary thinker visionary he embodied inspiration and this is what he said not all the fields are first class fields you must identify and plow third class fields as well put good manure sow good seeds supply adequate quantity of water and try to see whether you can beat the records of the first class fields and then he said identify the so called not so brilliant students and bring the best out of them to be on par if not better than the so called brilliant students it was a transformative ex- uh, message to me i suddenly realized that you have options you can do well 
and I did pass with the brilliantly with a distinction in the final year. But still, I had not formulated, I had not formulated something which embodied my passion for architecture and forms and things. Somehow, something was missing. One day, just serendipity, I was actually walking by accident. I bumbled into a lecture hall where one gentleman was giving a talk on taking the toe. The, the, fourth, the second metatarsal and putting it here in the temperamental joint. It just bowled me over the imagination, the possibility that existed to take something from one part of the body and create completely another, the creative potential that was, it just bowled me over. And I realized it was craniofacial surgery. He was a craniofacial surgeon from a great institution in Wellor. So he immediately said, I must become a craniofacial surgeon. So a choice was made. And this time I had the marks. I had the, the I had proved myself and I thought all will go well. And actually I prevailed upon my mother, please put me in Wellor under this man and I was put there. And I still remember the first day I met this gentleman. When I met him, uh, with great expectation, he told me, <coughs> I don't like you. I don't like students who come from private institutions, put influence to get into study under me. And he told me, I mean, he did, had not even looked at how I had performed, how I had uh, sort of overtaken my own limitations and come up. He told me, I don't want to see you. Stay away from me. And that was it. I suddenly realized you know, I would have given up, except for the fact that there was one nurse, Brother John Lazarus. I'm always grateful to him. He told me, Paul, don't give up. He is not the only man who has to teach you. You will learn. Don't worry about it. Stay here. I realized two things. If you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. But if you are passionate, determined to learn, nobody can stop you. I, it was an incredible experience. I realized that it is not important for you to actually learn the techniques of surgery from a surgeon, but really understand the spirit of adventure and the thinking process, what should be the fabric of imagination which dictate. And I could get it from thoracic surgery, I could get it in, in uh, Wellor, from every other specialty. I attended cardiology uh, ward rounds, I attended, uh, I worked a lot with the hand surgeons, and so much so, I really understood the principles of surgery and how it can be translated into becoming a great surgeon. In fact, the foundations were laid not in craniofacial surgery, but in other specialties and in learning from everywhere else. And as a consequence, I was able to move forward. Then I went to England and I suddenly found that I could translate, I could rekindle my nascent passion in the subject itself I had taken. As you can see, some of my artworks, and I worked with two great uh, surgeons. And as you can see here, I converted craniofacial surgery into forms and structures of architecture. From that, I was able to develop methods by which you can transpose the entire facial skeleton. Here is a patient here. She had come to me with a six-month-old baby she had, and she could not even lift her head. She said, for the sake of my baby, you should keep me alive. In those days, that skull base access was impossible. I was able to do this was a 13-hour operation. By using this methodology, I was able to help her, and she lived for 12 years. Even today, her sons come and meet me. And then, similarly, wow. this man actually had hardly any hope because he did not have a mandible. As you can see, he was struggling. I was able to develop a completely new genre, again, using the, the engineering principle of morphometric basis, and you can see the transformation brought in this fellow and also another patient. Similarly here, you can see, I started bringing kinematic organization, and as you can see here, can we get this one to speak? You see, the entire tongue has been removed by using... Well, I feel thank you very much. Okay. This is a patient where the tongue has been removed and certain principles of kinematics has been brought together to reconstitute the function of the tongue. Okay. Then, 
you know, in the Bible, Jesus said, one who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a little is dishonest in much. I got the privilege to come and build one of the largest hospitals uh, in Bangalore. You know, I suddenly realized the little beginning I had made, and when I was asked, it was a sort of creative milieu that was created. And as you can see here, then subsequently I went on to create also a company in chemistry dealing with composite interceptive medical science laboratories, dealing with chronic disorders where currently there are no medications. Then I also became interested in mathematics, a subject in which I had miserably failed. And uh, I started the, uh, the, using topologic methods. This is uh, uh, how we endured in the time of COVID, uh, I was able to do. Then also into fashion design. Anyway, what I'm going to, I'm going to leave you with four great thoughts. First is each failure is one more step we must climb towards the goal we are going. So don't worry about it. Failures are the ones who educate you precisely about what you need to do. Qualifications do not matter. You should learn to qualify to fit into whatever position God puts you in. And that is how you should move. Three. The substrate for imagination lies in poetry, art, and music. We could actually discuss this at great length. And that is why you have to nurture an understanding. And as I already told you, the future professionals will not be the specialist expert of today, but the generalist who actually can navigate multiple specialties with ease and comfort. And I leave you with the thought, 20 years from now on, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the ones, ones you did. That is why I think do not let failure set you back. However much your history of failure has been, you have a hope, a future, and I think the future that is emerging in science today is going to be very kind towards those of us who do not fit into the schema of the current educational system. Thank you very much indeed.